first of all, hi, Macy. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Of course. I'm so happy to meet you. I'm so happy to meet you too. The movie is amazing. It's so sweet. And I was bawling my eyes out. I love a good rom-com. <laughs> That's good. Where did you cry? Which bit got you the most? I, I'm like, a, every time like people cry, like <laughs> that makes me cry. But I think definitely at the end when like Chloe and Elle like become friends at the airport, like that moment really like, that one really yeah. got me. I love that arc. I think they had a really good way of sort of setting it up in a way that you felt really sort of assured and comforted at the end. But... I know, because you didn't think she was going to be, you thought she was going to be this whole mean girl the whole time. Is that what you thought? Because so, when you actually watch it again now, she isn't like that. But it's, it's no. interesting how, because you're being told the story through Elle's lens, how easily you suddenly start interpreting her behavior as something completely different. So it's cool to watch it twice, I think. Was it hard at all to be like mean in the beginning to Joey King's character? Was that <laughs> difficult at all? Well, I just played the truth of it. So the truth is that she is genuinely so excited to meet this person who is so important in Noah's life. So I was just being 100% genuine. It comes across as mean girl because you're, again, like you're seeing it through her lens. But no, I was just so excited to be around her. And it was really weird watching her sort of snarl at me because in real life, we're, we're best friends. Like we instantly just hit it off. So if anything, I was just like, why is she not being nice back? Like the whole way through. What, if anything, do you have in common with your character? What do we have in common? So, I mean, I went to Oxford, she goes to Harvard. So we have a very intense education in common. Um, she traveled the world. I love traveling I've done a lot of traveling um I think I have an element of this and then she takes it to the next level whereby you know I, I feel like because I've spent a lot of time around with a lot of different people and my parents are both actors so and I was only child so I was always around sort of older people so I'm, I find it easy to sort of have conversations with people from different experiences and I think Chloe is one of those people who she can walk into any room and she will just effortlessly be herself and sort of captivate everyone so she's a more extreme version of that than I am um but I just think also she wants the best for everyone around her like she wants to elevate everyone around her um and that's really important to me to be someone who can be a positive impact on any space I go into um she's cool I mean I she's definitely taught me a lot and I feel like I aspire to be like her I heard that you guys filmed majority of the movie in Cape Town. Yeah, for four months we were there. How was that? Any fun memories you can share? Uh, I love, I love Cape Town. We were in Cape Town and we were also in Durban. Um, I mean, it's the most stunning place. It has a really complex history. And I, so I equally as much enjoyed sort of celebrating it as I did going into the townships and having real conversations with people and being invited into people's homes and working with some incredible um, like organizations who support local people there. Um, so it was a real cultural experience. It was heavy at times, but on the other side, you're on set and you're having a great time every day. And, you know, you're working with lots of South African actors who were playing the other school kids who were so much fun. And they would sort of take us out in the town and show us their side of things and feasting, amazing tasting menus and wine tasting. I read that you are starting your own diversity and inclusion focused production company. Yes. What? Yes. What motivated you to start this? What could you tell us about it? So it's called Barefaced Productions. And Barefaced is, my mom's from Guyana. And in Guyana, Barefaced is a word that's sort of a pet name for someone who goes against the grain, who sort of isn't afraid to speak up and speak out and sort of challenges the norm. Um, and, you know, I've been in this business for a long time because of my parents just watching and observing and so often I would see content that didn't fully satisfy me in terms of how diversity was being conveyed you know the often you'd see a tokenized character who was marginalized or you'd find someone who was purely there to support the lead character and not actually going into any depth about their own background and I used to question it and then I realized you know so many people who are writing it so many people who are directing it who are casting it who are creating it are not at all representative of the stories they're telling so what we'd want to do is we want to diversify every stage of the process. So from the, you know, from the creators all the way down, we're going to have a completely diverse team. And I hope therefore we can show nuanced and complex um, marginalized stories in a new way that we're not really seeing enough of at the moment. And also just to provide a platform for other marginalized filmmakers to be able to share their stories. Do you have any personal experiences that motivated you to start this production company? 
just not seeing it. You know, I was be on set and I would just be so frustrated. And, you know, sometimes a, a script would be sent to me to verify because they were not sure how they were writing a character of color. And I'm like, you know, why can't you just have someone in your writer's room? Why are you not, why is it that, you know, in a giant conglomerate company that you are, you have no one to ask advice for except for the actor. It just didn't feel right that there were not other people within the creative process. So I'd say, to be honest, it's my own personal experience. And then traveling so much and meeting so many amazing artists who have insane stories that they want to tell, but don't have the means to tell it. So there's like this gap between the middle and I want to help sort of bridge that gap and sort of really be able to get this content that I think can really help to heal lots of minority people and also to challenge sort of prejudice within people who are not exposed to minority people as well on a daily basis and just really sort of help move this sort of social consciousness along. Is there someone you look up to in Hollywood, would you say? Yes. I mean, I love Dee Rees. It's one of my favorite filmmakers. Um, her first feature, Pariah, it's stunning. And it's, you know, so simple, low budget, but her use of light, of color to tell story. And I've read some of the interviews about it afterwards with her. And it just, it really has influenced me as a filmmaker. Um, Barry Jenkins, I love, you know, Moonlight is still oh. one of my favorite pieces. Again, taking a what well, technically is a queer story, but telling mm -hmm. it in a way that we've never seen it before. And in a way where that was not all that it was, it was so much more than just that experience. It was him, that was just one facet of his identity. Um, I love Sean Baker. Sean Baker, I think it's really cool just in terms of how naturalistic and organic his filmmaking is, like Tangerine, um, which he filmed all on iPhones, which is really cool. Um, yeah, and then um, the Florida Project he did after that, which I also loved. And, you know, Ava DuVernay, she's fantastic. I love the way that she bridges the gap between documentary and sort of really information heavy stuff. And then also incredible works of, you know, art like Selma, you know, I think that she, yeah, she's, she's definitely a huge influence to me. Amid the pandemic, we're spending a lot of time inside by ourselves. What have you been doing in your free time? I read that Joey King has been making some dioramas. Anything <laughs> interesting that you've been doing that's a little oh. bizarre maybe? I mean, to be honest, it's been amazing to have time to work on my production company. So we've been developing two projects. So lots of writing um, and talking and interviewing, but also I tried gardening, tried and failed at gardening, which was really sad. I really tried. I planted, I think six different vegetables and the only things that, I, that survived were the two that are already sort of this big and they're struggling along. None of the seeds grew. I have three sunflowers that are struggling to grow. Um, I also got a puppy right before quarantine. Oh. That's been amazing. So I've been doing lots of puppy time training and also just taking time. I'm so go, go, go that I really challenged myself to be still and to take those days where I just sit on the couch and watch Netflix, you know, knowing that it's okay to just have some sort of self care moments and just really reflect. You don't have to be constantly creating and putting stuff out there. So it's been a good learning curve. You can watch the kissing booth too and have a glass of wine and exactly. self-care. <laughs>